What's up guys, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another marker review video. You guys know I do these fairly often here on my channel and you guys really seem to like them. So today I am going to be sharing with you the Shuttle Art 88 color markers. You can purchase these on Amazon. It comes with, as you would guess, 88 colors and it retails for about $44. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up and kind of show you what we've got. Are you a little bit overwhelmed? Cause I know I am. So I've already taken the liberty of swatching out all of these colors and kind of doing my typical little tests and uh, kind of examples that I like to typically demonstrate. If you would like to download this little color chart, it is available on my Patreon, which is linked down below, and is publicly available, so you do not have to pay to access this. Uh, it just kind of comes in handy if you were to purchase these markers. I would highly recommend making one of these yourself. However, if you were just wanting to kind of take a closer look at the colors in this set, um, it is available for you. So I'm mostly going to be talking about the variety of colors in this set, kind of what I think about them. I will be kind of comparing them a little bit to Copic markers and other cheap markers that I've used in the past, but I just kind of wanted to summarize what we're going to be covering today. Unless you're a stranger to my channel, then you kind of know how it goes here. I pretty much do all my marker reviews the same way, and I am going to be doing a video in the near future kind of comparing and contrasting all of the different markers that I've tried thus far, um, so look forward to that. But let's get into talking about these bad boys. So like I mentioned, these retail for about $44 on Amazon for 88 colors that works out to about 52 cents per marker very reasonable pretty comparable to the Ohuhu markers which retail for about 50 cents a marker so these are pretty close in that range this is what the markers themselves look like they have kind of this triangular barrel um, they have again two ends one bullet nib slash fine nib side and one you guessed it chisel nib. This is a pretty basic breakdown for inexpensive markers, so nothing that should surprise you. Um, I'm not really sure what this AM101 conforms to mumbo jumbo is or what it means. Um, it's the same on all of the markers, so I really have no idea. Uh, the color name is on both ends of the cap, which is nice that you have it on both ends, not just one. Uh, sorry, the camera's a little bit hard to get it to focus on just this one thing when there's so much else happening. Um, but this is the color BG1 Blue Gray. The caps also have this like interesting texture on them that I think is really cool. I guess it helps you to grip and remove the cap. Um, the one annoying thing about triangular barrels is that it can be a little bit tricky to snap them back on if it's not lined up perfectly. You don't really get that same problem with a round cap or even with an oval cap. Um, so that is kind of one very, very minor complaint uh, that I do have. Obviously, one of the biggest plus sides of this set is the large color variety, but just to kind of give you my thoughts on the color breakdown in this set, um, I like a lot of things about it, and there's a lot of things that um, I feel like may be missing as well. So. First off, I love how many grades you get. You get a full variety in here. You get a nice range of cool tone grays, a nice range of warm tone grays, and then they even go a step further and give you these blue grays, which are, as you can see, kind of just a little bit cooler than the cool grays. So I actually really, really enjoy that. Um, I really, I'm very, very impressed with the grays. I will say that the warm gray variety does seem to have kind of a little bit of um, inconsistency. It kind of goes like purpley and then more like green as you get darker, um, but that is a very, very minor complaint. You do get a couple of really nice lighter tones in this set. They're almost like fluorescent pastels that probably doesn't make sense but like I'm talking about this color here number seven this color number nine uh, number 38 104 these are really nice 
pale light colors that um, are nice to see and you don't often see these in uh, these kind of cheaper sets. You really see a lot of these bright mid-tone colors, which this set is definitely no outlier there. You get a lot of these really bright punchy colors, um, but it is nice to see a couple of these lighter tones as well to kind of help those blend out. One thing that I do feel like this set sort of lacks is a good selection of desaturated tones. Now, in my last marker review of the Fine Color Brush Markers, I talked about how how impressed I was with the number of desaturated colors like desaturated blues and and purples and you, you really added a lot of variety to that set and that set had far less colors than this set did now you do have this nice 42 color this kind of nice olive green even this 41 color is nice this 83 purple color very very nice as well and then of course like I mentioned you have all of these gray tones but I really would have liked to see a few Few more kind of muted tones uh, in this set just to make it a little bit more workable for my personal artwork obviously you know your your preference of colors is going to vary depending on the kind of art that you do so this is kind of a personal preference point but I wanted to go ahead and mention it anyway um, a fair amount of earth tones in here. I feel like you could definitely pull in a couple of these other tones up here and consider them earth tones as well because they're pretty close. Um, but I'm not too, you know, I, I guess I don't really feel strongly either way about how many earth tones are in this set. It's more than in some sets, like the Ohuhu marker set, I really didn't feel like they had a lot of earth tones, but the Ohuhu marker sets are random. So I guess that's sort of like to be expected. Uh, the one thing that I will say that surprised me in comparison to the Ohuhu marker set, which came with non-alcohol based highlighter colors, there are two very similar highlighter like colors in this set, but they are actually alcohol based, which is nice. So there is not uh, an inconsistency in the formula and you can see that because all of the colors here are alcohol based, all of them bled through. Um, by the way, I'm working on a piece of Georgia Pacific cardstock which works really really nicely for markers and is very inexpensive so that is what I like to use that is pretty much my spiel about the color variety I think it's great that you do get all of these colors one other thing that I will say really quickly and it is kind of nitpicky so be warned I do feel like there are a lot of colors that are sort of duplicates in this set so yes you get 88 colors but are they really 88 individually unique distinct colors not exactly these these two colors right here, 54 and 55, very, very similar. Um, 73, 81, and 82, all pretty similar. Uh, same goes for like this 35 and 37, these two yellows. Um, even like the, the darker gray tones, I just feel like are very, very similar. Uh, I don't fault them for this. I feel like this is a pretty common occurrence with cheaper marker sets. It is just kind of a downside that, you know, you're paying to get this large color variety and in some sense it is still a little bit limited. All right, so I went ahead and zoomed you in for my little color comparison uh, part down here. First thing I always like to do is test how my various liner pens stand up to these markers, and I do that by writing the pen down first and then going over it with a marker. In this case, I used 45. I typically like to use yellows because it shows smudging very well, um, or it shows smudging very easily. So in this instance, I think all of them smudged a little bit, but it could just be an example of me not letting like the soccer and Micron dry for long enough. I, I think typically you wanna let these pens dry for like 20, 30 minutes. I maybe gave it about five, so it smudged a little bit, but really not bad and not really any better or worse than my Copic markers. The Colerase pencil obviously smudges. The Sharpie pen actually stands up surprisingly well, but I do think it's an instance of the more ink you layer on top of it, the more likely it is to kind of bleed and feather because it is also alcohol based. So that is sort of something to keep in mind. 
They layer pretty much like every other marker that I've tried. Any more than four layers, you're kind of looking into just oversaturating your paper and getting sort of a grainier look, and the color doesn't really get darker. So you can see four layers is kind of the max here, which is not surprising. They are fairly easy to blend, given that they are a bullet nib marker. I was able to blend the grays fairly easily, and in the little examples of my illustrations using these markers. I didn't do a lot of very intense blending, but I did kind of blend the uh, white part of this unicorn very easily with some of the lighter grays. And Sam goes for this little kitty. And by the way, if you guys like these illustrations, you can shop these designs on t-shirts and stickers and notebooks on my Redbubble shop. So I will have that link down below. I'm not really going to do like time lapses of these just because they're so simple and kind of easy. Um, but I did turn these into designs for my Redbubble and they're also going to be on my store Envy shop once that reopens this summer. So yeah, just a little plug there. But I did color all of these using the shuttle art markers and I was very impressed. I really thought that they blended very easily. You can see examples of blending here in the unicorn horn, in the kind of lighting rim around the unicorn, and in the mane and on the skin. So this is actually a really good example of how these markers can achieve very simple basic blending. So if you are into doing artwork that is like this and is very simple, then I think these markers would be great for you. And they also really would lend themselves very well to cell shading, which is kind of more more similar to what I did here in the main where you get more of that harsh line shading they work really well for that as do most bullet nib markers so if that is the kind of art style you have and the type the type of art that you like to create bullet nib markers would do very well for you and you don't necessarily have to go the extra mile for a marker that has a brush nib so that is my consensus on blending now, I always like to do little tests to see if lighter colors will lift when they're put on top of darker colors. So I did that example here. They do lift fairly well and you could probably get some pretty cool techniques with that. So that is always nice to see because it does kind of open up the uh, opportunity for more variety with the colors that you have. And it responded fairly well to Colorless Blender, although I do always like to test the Colorless Blender with red because I feel like if any color is gonna give you difficulty it's gonna be a red um, but I actually am still fairly pleased with that result although one thing to note is that you don't really get a colorless blender type marker in this set out of all the colors that you do get that is one thing that is missing and I actually don't know how many cheap brands have a colorless blender marker I know some do some don't so I guess it just sort of depends but this set does not so just to give you kind of a size comparison to the Copic markers, the Shuttle Art markers are a little bit longer, though the size of the barrel is pretty much the same. So it's really just the caps that are longer and the amount of ink in the barrel is probably pretty comparable to Copic markers. The chisel nib is pretty much the same as it is for most markers although i guess actually now that i look at it um the shuttle art marker sorry my black copic marker is so dirty that's embarrassing um but the shuttle art chisel nib is actually a little bit wider um, but it seems to be about the same thickness. Um, and I won't bother comparing the brush nib to the bullet nib because they're really not very comparable and I am a brush nib kind of gal. So um, I will always prefer Copics to these cheaper alternatives, but like I mentioned, Markers like this can be great for artists who are just starting out or maybe an artist that prefers a cell shading style and doesn't need that brush nib to kind of taper and get those really smooth gradients. Um, I think this would be great. Like I said, I'm really pleased with the number of grays. I think the number of earth tones is great, especially if you're just starting out. You get a lot of really bright, punchy colors in here. So if you love that, this is the set for you. If you are into more muted tones, um, don't really know what to tell you. I think this this would not be the set for you. My one complaint that I didn't mention earlier, and I'm even a little bit reluctant to mention now, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. These markers do smell a bit strong. I did notice that while coloring with them, even for just a short period of time, I was starting to get a little bit of a headache and that really hasn't happened to me with any other cheap marker aside from the concept markers that I reviewed over a year ago now. 
I, I'm a little disappointed in that. Um, it could just be that I'm particularly sensitive to the fumes that this, these markers give off. But I do think that, um, you know, I've been working with Copics for years and it's never a problem I have with my Copics, but it is a problem I have with these markers. So something about the ink quality is slightly different in that way. Um, it does remind me the same way that the Ohuhu markers behave. It's a very potent ink. It tends to kind of penetrate the paper really quickly and you do get a little bit less of that kind of graininess of the paper. It, it kind of varies color to color, but you know, I describe the fine color markers as being a little bit more translucent like the Copic markers where you can kind of build and layer a little bit more easily. This ink I would describe as just being a little bit more potent and a little bit more full impact right from the get go. Um, but like I said, if you're into these punchy colors, I think that that's a really awesome thing and that you would probably really enjoy out of this set. Um, but that's pretty much it for my review of these. It was kind of a little bit short and sweet. Hopefully you guys don't mind. As you're watching this, I am putzing around Europe. So I'm trying my very best to get these videos out to you guys ahead of time. Again, if you like these designs, be sure you check out my Redbubble shop. I have them on shirts and pillows and notebooks and lots of other fun stuff like that. You can also get stickers on Redbubble if you like these designs as stickers. So that's an awesome way if you want to support me or if you just want to own one of those stickers feel free to do that the link is down below as is the link to my patreon where you can download this if you want to keep up with all of my art and all of my Europe adventures be sure you're following me on Instagram I'm sure I'm posting a lot over there but thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I love you guys have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon bye